Your turn. Whoa! Ah! Can I just start out by talking to the dads in the group, the fellow fathers, especially the young dads? One of the important things, one of the responsibilities that you have as a dad is keeping your kids alive through things like feeding them, finding food, getting food for them, and, and having them eat it. Sounds simple, but these days it's getting increasingly more and more difficult. Let me explain. 2012, you've got three kids. Life is good. You go out, you, you buy a 99 cent corn dog or a taco. They split it and then in a few years they graduate to an actual kid's meal. And it's like $2.99, $3.99, five bucks. They get a few different things. They get a toy or whatever. They're happy. Then comes the day when they want a full meal themselves. Are you kidding me? And that's okay too, because they're not gonna finish it all. They're still little, so you're either gonna have leftovers, or what I would do when I, when my kids first started getting like meals, I didn't order th anything myself. I would let them order whatever they wanted, and then whatever they didn't eat, I would, I would just finish whatever they didn't eat. But then you start to notice that they start eating more and more, and there's, there's less and less leftovers for you. Until eventually, the day comes when all of your kids eat a full meal, and then you realize, crap, I gotta get me a meal, I gotta get them a meal. So it used to cost me the price of feeding one person every time we go out. Now, it costs the price of, of feeding four or five people. It's a lot of money. And I remember being like, okay, well, at least this is the worst that it's gonna get. At least it's never going to get worse than this right now. But I was wrong. It continues to get worse because apparently Chipotle doesn't put enough meat in their burritos for Lillian, so she needs extra protein. And apparently Luke doesn't need one burrito, he needs two burritos, or a burrito and a taco and a quesadilla. So it just keeps getting worse. Feeding your kids just keeps getting more and more expensive, but I can help you out one time. One time, I could help you out. For your first ever Flex Pro order, I could save you guys 40%. And this is pretty rad because it's shipped right to your house, shows up frozen, you throw it in the freezer, super convenient, put it in your microwave, cook it up, feed your kids, they're happy, you're happy, and life is good. And hey, 40%, 40% is not bad. That's a good deal. Like if I went into Costco and I announced that because of me, everyone gets 40% off, I would have single moms throwing themselves at me. That is so true. I can't hook you up at Costco, but at Flex Pro, I can save you 40% off your first order. So click the link below, save money, feed your kids. One of the cool things about moving here to Utah is that there are so many uh, mountain bike parks or places to Right, it seems like every town you go through or sometimes every neighborhood has a little section dedicated to mountain bikes. So it's kind of cool to go and explore. I came across this post on Instagram uh, of this cool little park in this little neighborhood on the other side of the valley. Uh, I think it's like 30 minutes away, but I think it'd be worth the trip just to go check it out. But I figure, hey, why not bring a bike with us? We just gotta open it up first. I'm gonna push it up these stairs. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's really packed in there. I'm gonna push that down. So you actually you use the key to unlock it, but not lock it, I figured out. So to unlock it, you use the key. You only need one key. Okay, so then it pops it up, it's unlocked, and then to lock it, you just push down on the little knob. Bam. Are you kidding me? Dude, this was not supposed to be snowing. We got the e-bike folded up in the back. I'll show you how to do that later. Pretty simple. But we're just about to this place where I wanted to come here because I thought it'd be a good spot because this e-bike actually has three different 
suspension systems. There's the forks up front, and then there's like a middle suspension, and then a dual suspension in the back, which I thought seemed kind of crazy. And I was like, man, I want to try that out. I want to see what it feels like. I want to see if it, it, what it's like jumping it. But then when I got it and I realized how heavy it is, I think, um, you know, this bike is so heavy. It's a beast. This thing is like a tank. I don't know if you really want to jump a tank, but this bike seems like a workhorse and it'd be good for how rugged it is and probably could get through anything. They say it's pretty fast. So I figured what the heck, let's go down here. Let's check this out and uh, let's do it. Let's do a snow test. Let's see how it handles the snow. Here they film me. Not you, film me. There really is only one way to unfold the bike that I have found. And that is like this. Ugh, see, it's easy. I recommend, personally, I recommend locking it in place so that way the bike stays in one one piece. Uh, just one of the things I like to do. All right, so this is the seat post. The seat post is pretty beefy. Like, look look at this. This is the locking mechanism. Okay, have you ever seen a bike with a lock post like this? This is so intense. Overkill. Anyway, so this is the, this is the battery. The battery is the seat post. You have a key, you unlock it, slide this up. It is not easy, it's kind of heavy. Um, takes a little bit of uh, effort and manpower, which we're not afraid of. We're not afraid to get our hands dirty and do some work to get the battery out. Three suspensions, you got the forks. This does not seem to have a lot of travel. There's a little bit of travel right here. There's two seats, it comes with options. Like you ride, you ride on this seat, I'm bored, I'm tired of this seat. This seat's just getting old. What? New seat, second seat, this is nice. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's try it out. Push this button and turn it on. Boom. Boom. Hold this button right. Okay, it helps if you move it. Okay. And then we don't want level zero, that's for sure. Four. We want level five is what we want. See what I mean, guys? This thing just looks really beefy. It looks like a tank. It fits great on it. Throw throttle right here and I wasn't done yet talking, but okay, go ahead. Whoa! <laughs> oh. So we got this pump track in Daybreak, Utah. And then there's some other jumps down here we haven't gone to yet, but dude, what a little cool neighborhood. If you're like me, you just see like open vacant areas, kind of like on on-ramps on freeways and stuff. And you're like, man, that could be a sick little spot for a track or something. Whoa, it looks down. But no one ever does anything with it or builds anything except for here in uh, beautiful Daybreak, Utah. All right, so we found this line right here, which would be pretty cool, but it's covered with snow right now. Apparently the neighbors don't think it's a priority to groom and shovel their trails. It's really sad when people don't take care of their trails, but okay, Luke, so I'll hit it just for the sake of content and then you just film and maybe something interesting will happen. How fast was it when you were riding on the road? I think I got like full speed with like 25, 26. Nice. Your turn. Whoa. Look, how many tracks were here when we got here? Three or four? None. There was no tracks on this line when we got here. How many are there now? Two. Four. There's one. That was me. There's one because I did it. I'm the only person to drop off that in the snow. They said it couldn't be done. No, they didn't. 
Today we proved them wrong, guys. They never said that. <laughs> was that good or should I get another shot? No, that was good. Whoa. Dude, you all right? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. All right, take two, guys. We're going to do it again. Luke, your angle wasn't very good, so we're going to have Mason film. Yep. Get out of here! All right. Whoa! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Too much throttle. I know what we're going to name the bike. Ball buster. <laughs> Ow.